so we have this uh, clutter over here with k. We just want to know what k is worth. So they're telling us what 9 tenths of 1k is worth. If you took k and multiplied it by 9 tenths, it would be 3 halves. We do not want to know what 9 tenths of k is. We want to know what 1k by itself is. Does that make sense? Okay. So how are we going to get it? Well, we don't want 9 tenths times k, right? We would like to have what number times k? What number would we like, would we like to wind up with in front of k, Dalton? Zero. Well, a zero would mean zero times k. What's a number times zero? We don't want zero times k, so we want one. That's what we'd like. Is there a way to make that happen? Yes. Yeah. How? By dividing 9 tenths. Divide by 9 tenths? Certainly. What's 9 tenths divided by 9 tenths? Zero. Zero. No, one. 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 That's what we want. One. One. Some number divided by itself. Five divided by 5 is 1. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 9 tenths divided by 9 tenths is 1. How do we multiply, or sorry, how do we divide 3 halves by 9 tenths? How do we divide by a fraction? Jason. By, by the reciprocal. Not cross multiply, no. Three halves oh. times ten ninths. Once we figure that out, we'll know what k is because dividing this by nine tenths makes a one k. Dividing this by nine tenths will tell us what that k is worth. Uh, three and nine have a factor of three in common. <coughs> three divided by three is one. Nine divided by three is three. These have a factor of 2 in common. 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 10 divided by 2 is 5. We can multiply straight across now. We get 5 over 3. Okay. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do almost exactly the same thing. It's going to be equivalent to what we just did. Except for instead of the dividing by step, I'm just going to say if I multiply this guy, what can I multiply this by that winds up with a 1? It's reciprocal. Any fraction is reciprocal. When you multiply them together, you get 1. See, if you like to think of it as 90 over 90, right? You get, that's 1. Or 10 cancels 10 and 9 cancels 9, you get 1. So we have to do the same thing to both sides. Why do we have to do the same thing to both sides? To balance. 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 To not to balance it, but keep to it balanced. keep it balanced. There it is. That one's balanced. Keep it balanced, OK? And, of course, we wind up with the same answer. I just kind of skipped the, the question of how do we divide by a fraction? Instead, what I did was to multiply by the reciprocal right away. So, five can, you, is can you do it the other way if you like, find a common denominator and stuff? We, knew, we would never need a common denominator in a situation oh, like this because we're not adding or subtracting. Right? Yeah, sorry. So adding and subtracting, that's when you find a common denominator. Um, this is uh, the two most straightforward ways I could think to do this. You could do it in lots of roundabout ways, but it's pretty straightforward. What is it? Zebra day? Animal day. Animal day. Why are you drinking Kirby? You don't need that. All right, let's not start the timer. What's the next question? Emma? 25. 25. Negative 2 equals 6 sevenths p. Really similar situation here, right? We don't want to know what 6 sevenths times p is. We want to know what what times p? 1, one times, p. times p. Because what's 1 times p? 1 times p is p. 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 One. 1 times p is p. So how do I take what we were given, 6 sevenths p, and do something to it to make it into a 1 p? Is that? Multiply it by its reciprocal. That's my uh, operation of choice. I'm going to do that. I'm going to multiply. Here, I'll, I'll put this in parentheses. I'll put it over 1 so everything will keep uh, kind of straight here. 7 times 6 is uh, 42. Over 42 is 1. Great. OK. Here, let's just multiply straight across. We get negative 14 over 6 times 1 is 6. We can simplify that, right? Simplify it to what? Uh -huh. Kayla? You could divide um, the 14 and 6 by 2 and get 7 thirds. 
seven over three. Don't want to lose track of that. That negative. Yes. Unless I said uh, write it in simplest form. Well, I didn't simplify and then, it. So. And then in oh, that so case, a lot of times I don't take off credit for that. Emma. I forgot what I was going to ask. Oh, Emma. So when you do negative, it's only on the one that's negative, not like the whole fraction. That's a good question. Okay, so is it this, or is it this, or is it this? Okay. The answer is any of them. They're all the same. Okay. Because a negative 7 divided by a positive 3, what's a negative divided by a positive? A negative, right? The whole number here is negative, right? So whether I think of it as a negative 7 divided by 3, or a 7 thirds, that is negative. Or what's a 7 divided by a negative 3? What's a positive divided by a negative? Negative as well, not 21. Negative 7 thirds. Whether it's a negative 7 over a positive 3, or a 7 over a negative 3, or just the fraction itself as a number is negative, it's all the same. Here is what's different. Negative 7 over negative 3. What's a negative divided by a negative? <coughs> positive. That's a positive 7 thirds. That is not what's going on here. And that equation is true. Negative 7 over negative 3 is equal to positive 7 thirds. So however you write it, the this is usually not how anyone writes a negative fraction. You don't usually write 7 divided by negative 3. Unless, for some reason, I am dividing by negative 3. Like, here's a situation where I might divide by negative 3. Negative 3, x equals 5. You might as well say 7. Yeah. How am I going to get x by itself? How do I get a 1x? So how do I make this a positive? I've got to make it a positive for one thing. Divide by 3. Divide by 3? Negative 3. Negative 3. Look, we just divided by negative 3, right? 7 over negative 3. But when I write my answer, I would write x equals negative 7 thirds. That's what I would write. All right? Is that overkill enough of an answer for you, Emma? Yeah. Okay, good. Question? 20. 20. opposed to adding and subtracting things to w. See what I mean? When we're adding and subtracting things to w, we like to get w plus 0, because that leaves w essentially alone. And again, when we're multiplying and dividing, we would like to wind up somehow with either 1 times w or w divided by 1. Right? 1 times w is w. w divided by 1 is w. We'd like to leave it that way on the right side. So whether we do it in one fail swoop, or we do it a piece at a time, how can we turn that into like 1 times w or w divided by 1? Carter, you got an idea? Is this a stretch or something? What was the question? So the question here is, well, the thing we want to have happen is this side turns into a 1 times w or a w divided by 1. Because what's 1 times w? w. And what's one w divided by 1? W. Right. And right now, that's not the case. We'd like to somehow we could manipulate it somehow, like to multiply it by something or divide it by something, turn this into one of these. Any ideas? Just throw something out there and let's see what happens if we try that. Huh? Okay, reciprocal of what? Reciprocal of w and h. So the, de the reciprocal of w over 8 would be 8 over w. Right? What's that? W what? This does? No. This mind. does. Never mind. Oh. Well, I wish I could be hooked to have given up on that. It sounded interesting. Now, now if we do multiply these together, we would get one, wouldn't we? We don't we don't exactly want one. We would like a W to hang around, wouldn't we? We would like a W to stay. 
What's that? Okay, so if we go through with this, then on this side we'll have um, a negative w over 8 times 8 over w. Uh, what's w times 8? W. 8. 8w? <coughs> yes, same thing. 8 times w? 8w. And it's negative. What's 8w over 8w? 1w. Just 1. 8 divided by 8 is 1, and w divided by w is 1. But what if, what if this happened instead? What if there was no w there? Then, then what would this be? 8. 8w over 8. 8w over 8. 1w. Yeah, it would be, well, it would be negative. But would it be close? It would be negative 1w? Yeah. Can I do it? Can I maybe change this a little bit so that I don't wind up with this w down here? <coughs> About we just make this instead of a W, we make it a one. 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 Ah. So just multiply by eight. Eight divided by eight will be one. Okay, and we'll make this a one as well. Okay, what's going on now? Now we have six times eight. Forty-eight. What is forty-eight equal? W. Almost. One W. Negative one, w. Negative, one negative W is negative one times W. We're so, so close. What do we do about that negative? Do a positive. So it's How do you make it into a positive? Divide yeah. by a negative. What's that? Divide by a negative. Divide by a negative. Divide by a negative what? Negative W. How about negative just one? Oh, okay. This is... A negative one. Then. Negative one divided by negative one is what? Positive one. Negative divided by negative is positive. One divided by one is one. Divided by negative one. What's 48 divided by negative one? Negative 48. It is negative 48. That is what W is worth. Let me show you what I would do. That worked. We got it done. That was hard. Six equals negative W over eight. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to move that. I'm going to multiply this by a negative first off because this is negative. I want it to be positive. Negative times negative is positive. Multiply it by a negative 8 over 1. Right? Because the negative times the negative is positive, and 8 divided by 8 is 1. So we have positive 1 times w. I'll come over here and multiply this by negative 8. I won't write it over 1 because that's the same thing as just negative 8 or 6 enough to multiply them together. Negative 48 equals negative times negative is positive. 8 divided by 8 is 1 times W. Positive 1 W, which is just W. Katie said wait. How did you do that? How did you do what? How did you do that? Which is, what is what? I just multiplied negative w over 8 by a negative 8. Okay. Negative times negative is positive, and 8 divided by 8 is 1. So we have positive 1 times w, which is the w. Okay? Are you sure? Mm -hmm. We got a negative, I want to make it positive, I'll multiply by negative. There's an 8 in the denominator, so I'll multiply by an 8 in the numerator, so then the 8 divides the 8, and we get 1. The feeling it's not completely clear. Let me show you. It's the same as negative w, negative w over 8 is the same as negative 1 eighth times w. Just rewriting the, the original problem. Somebody explain to me why negative 1 eighth times w is the same as negative w divided by 8. Because they have the same number. What's that? What I'm showing you that is I can rewrite this, the original problem, negative w over 8 equals 6. I'm just taking this and rewriting it as negative 1 eighth times w. Yeah. It should be the same thing. Why are these the same? How can we be so sure that they're the same? Because 
show you why these are the same, why these are going to have to be equal to each other. If I write this as a fraction w over 1, can I do that? w over 1, is that the same as w? Yes. Yeah. Now I have two fractions, and I'm multiplying them together. How do I multiply fractions? Mm -hmm. Multiply with a reciprocal. You, you multiply right across. Straight across. 1 times w is w. 8 times 1 is 8. And that's a negative, that's a positive, so we have a negative w over 8. So the reason why we would do that is because maybe this makes more sense to somebody else. We have a negative 1 over 8, and just like this problem here, that problem there, we can multiply this by its own reciprocal. Negative times negative is positive. 8 over 1 times 1 over 8 is 1. We have 1 w over here. And again, we multiply by negative 8. W. However, it makes the most sense to you. If you like that, do that. If you like it this way, do it that way. If you like to write it as negative one eighth times w, do it that way. Any one of those is hundred percent fantastic and correct. Okay, so don't get up on, don't get hung up on any one of them that confuses you. Concentrate on the one that doesn't confuse you. Okay, I'll show you several ways. Because different people are different. And this may make sense to one person, and this makes sense to somebody else. All right, that was number 20. Next question. About 1 point 33. In 1.1. 1 Okay. Uh, let's, before we try and manipulate anything about the equation on either side, how about if we just kind of clean it up, simplify the way it looks? Can we put anything together? Emma. H divided by 2? Yeah, that's just an order of operations thing. H plus 8 divided by 2. When I look at this H, should I divide by 2 or should I add H to 8? Divide by 2 first. Negative 3 equals H plus 8 divided by 2 is 4. That's a little easier to look at. H equals 1. Oh, I got this. Let me do minus 4 and minus 4. There we go. You're learning. Negative seven. Negative yeah. seven. Oh, yes. Oh. Careful, you don't go too fast and get something like one. We why are we subtracting four, Dalton? Because this is. Four. It makes it zero. It makes it zero. H plus <laughs> zero. H plus zero. <laughs> <coughs> yes. Oh, All right, let's go to one point two. Six and seven. Yes, Lily. Seven. ask you real quick, what if this was negative 4x, I'll change it from c to x, uh, equals 
24. How would you handle a situation like that, Avery? You divide it by 24 on that side and you cancel out. And so x would be what? Negative. Negative 6, good. Okay, so this is very close to that. It's not quite negative 4c equals a number, but could it be that if you do something? 19 minus 4, so that would be like 15. C. No, sir. What? Nope. Why no? Why can I not take 19 minus 4? Yes? Because you need to do the op. You need to make 4. You need to cancel 4 out and make it plus 4. This is well. Let's read this. Let's read this out loud. Somebody read exactly what this says to me out loud. Nineteen <coughs> minus four times c equals seventeen. Nineteen minus four times c. That minus four. Is it minus? Is something subtracting negative. four? Negative. Negative. What's the same thing? Minus and negative. What I'm saying is, I cannot add a four to this and think it's going to do anything here. Because negative 4c plus 4. Can I put those together? No. no. Does this 4 cancel this negative 4? No. No, no. no these are not like terms. They won't go together. But people make this mistake all the time. They say add 4 and it cancels out the 4. But it's not, it's not c minus 4. It's c negative 4 times c. And why can't I take? Four away from 19. This is multiplied by C. The order of operations tells us that we would multiply the negative 4 by the C before we subtract 4 from 19. And since there is no C, we don't know what C is, we can't multiply it out before we add 19 on. Okay. But what we can do is subtract 19 from both sides. You could um, read that as a second. Very good at this. What's that? Yeah. Like recalibrate. Yeah, recalibrate. Okay, what's 19 minus 19? Zero. 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 So now we have negative 4c plus zero, zero equals negative 2. Negative 2. 17 minus 19. No, 7. Here's 17 minus 19. Minus 19 puts us at negative 2. All right, so we have negative 4c equals negative 2. And what can we do now? Same as this problem, Jackson. Never tried to yet. But now you can do the negative four. Why can't we do it like back then? Because what you were trying to do is add four. Why can't we do negative four? We're not we're not subtracting four. We're dividing by negative four. Before we were talking about adding four. Now we are dividing by negative four. Is adding four the same as is adding the same as dividing? No, before we were talking about adding 4, now we're dividing by negative 4. The reason why we can divide by negative 4 is what's negative 4 divided by negative 4? 1. 1. Negative 4 divided by negative 4 is 1. And what's negative 2 divided by negative 4? Positive. It's positive. No, it's 2 divided by 4. Not 4 divided by 2. 2 divided by 4. 2. 1 half. 2 divided by 4, not 4 divided by 2. It doesn't go either way. It only goes one way, 2 divided by 4. Or the fraction 2 fourths, and we simplify, divide by 2, and divide by 2, we get 1 half. Wouldn't it be negative 1 half? No, it was a negative oh. divided by negative. So by subtracting this extra number here and making it go to zero, now we're just left with 
negative 4 times c, we divide by negative 4. Let's look at number 6 as well. Do the same thing on both sides, right? Keep it balanced. And then will this work? What's 2 minus 2? 0. zero. zero. Three. Seems great. 32 plus 30. 30. And now what? Okay. Tiana? Then you divide by 10 on both sides. Because 10 divided by 10 is 1. Is 1. 1 times x equals 3. So x equals 3. We call it two-step equation. We want to subtract this thing from both sides so we have zero added on. And then divide by whatever is being multiplied by x so that we get one times x. If we try to do that in the other order, we run into a problem. 10x plus 2 equals 32. If you try to divide by 10 right now, you might just think, oh, I'll just divide by 10. You this when we think about equations, we think about doing the same thing to what? Scale. To scale. Not, Balance. not what reason, but we do the same thing to Equal. what? To both, both sides. To both sides. Oh. To this side and this side. Now, if I'm going to divide this side by 10, you okay? Divide the push side by 10. Well, yes, that too, but I have to divide this entire side by 10. And you can't do 2 divided by 10. Well, well, you can. It just equals a very long decimal. Well, it's 2 tenths equals 32 over 10. Okay. Well, we've done it correctly now, but it's a hassle because now we have this fraction that we have to deal with. But okay, we, we do have x plus 2 tenths equals 32 tenths. So how would we get, how would we get x by itself here? Minus two tenths. Thirty-two tenths minus two tenths. Is that ready to go? Can we do that subtraction? Yes, because both fractions. Yeah, have a common denominator. They have a common denominator. So thirty-two tenths minus two tenths is thirty tenths. And that's 30 divided by 10 is 30. Of course, you do get the same answer. Here's the mistake that people make is they go like this. 10x plus 2 equals 32. And they divide by 10. And then get x plus 2 equals 3.2, which is absolutely wrong. Because they did not divide 2 by 10. If you want to divide by 10 to start with, you have to divide 2 by 10. And then it just gets to be a hassle. I'd recommend, if you're going to approach this two-step problem, to subtract this away from both sides. Subtract 2, go to make this a 0, and then divide. So get rid of that extra, whatever's added or subtracted, and then divide. Any questions? Did you feel like you got that? Two-step equation down, subtract or add first, and then divide next. Yeah. Okay, let's look at another example. 5x plus 8 equals uh, 33. Five what? Five, five x. Five x. Yes. Five x. Five x. Twenty-five. 
plus 25? Equals 25. Equals 25. I think Carter was trying to tell me 5x plus 0, which yeah. is good and studious to do. And then 5 by 5. 5 by 5 on both sides. more super quick, negative 9 plus 3x equals uh, 18. Minus 9. Okay. Let's check and make sure. Negative 9 plus 9? Zero. Good. That's what we want. Plus 9 on both sides. 3x equals 27. Divide by three on each side. Three on both sides. X equals nine. Okay. okay. Get rid of that little extra bit, make it go to zero, and then we'll divide. Make our lines much easier. Okay, 270 equations. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Thumbs sideways. Okay, let's see if this Extra. homework review pushes like to this. homework to, to thumbs up or thumbs this down. Is how I am. To I'm like 45 the degree angle of thumbs. This. I'm like in the middle of this. Okay, that that sounds like we're ready to try a problem on our own. Okay. So, put everything away. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.